Welcome back. If you recall our last video, we looked at using a Riemann sum of rectangular prisms to approximate the volume under a surface. And now we're going to sort of do the formal transition of that Riemann sum into a double integral. But before we do that, let's activate some prior knowledge because this all is just building on what you've done in Calc 2 and it shouldn't be uh, much more of a, a leap from what you already know. So um, back to Calc 2, suppose we have this function f of x and we wanted to find the area under that function between the points x equals a and x equals b. And recall that in order to do that, we could um, break this up into m rectangles and sum up those areas to approximate the area under the curve where our area was going to be approximately equal to this Riemann sum of our function's height evaluated at each of our x increments times that width of each rectangle, delta x, and we're going to sum up the total number of rectangles where our rectangles are going to increment between our i equals 1 rectangle all the way up to our i equals m rectangle. Um, and of course to find that exact area, I just went ahead and took the limit as our number of rectangles went to infinity. So we're taking an infinite number of infinitesimally thin rectangles by ratcheting our m value up indefinitely. And when we do that, we end up with this um, the limit of this Riemann sum, and that limit of the Riemann sum turned out to be the very definition of our integral. That is essentially the foundation that we're going to just build on for three space. So back to our surface that we have, we have our surface was a function of two variables, x and y, and it was 24 minus x squared minus y squared over 3. And we wanted to find the volume of this where x ranged between 0 and 3 and our y ranged between 0 and 2. And we ended up with six columns here. So let's go ahead and transfer what we did in that last video into a sort of a, a Riemann sum form. And we can move on from there. Recall we had our delta x and our delta y. And we could formally define that delta x as being um, b minus a over m, where b was our upper x limit, a was our lower limit of 0. So it was 3 minus 0 over 3, where 3 was our m value, because that was the number of increments we had in the x direction. And that gave us our delta x of 1. And we found the volume of each rectangular column as our delta x times our delta y times our function evaluated at these x and y values, which were in each of those sections we were looking at. Um, just an, a side note here, that delta x, delta y, we could call that delta a more generally. And um, that's going to be sort of a handy notation because we're looking at Cartesian coordinates now, but we're going to move on to um, other coordinate systems later. And that delta A is just sort of a more general way to say that. And our I here is just the same as in Calc 2. That's just our increment as we're, as we're moving up in our X um, values. And that J is just our increment for the Y values. We can go ahead and put this in a summation notation, and what we're going to do here is we're going to just sort of nest these summations. So we're going to have the inside um, summation is when we're changing our y value. Our j is going from 1 to 2. That turned out to be the same as our y value for this, so this is our y going from 1 to 2. And we kind of go back and forth with y is 1 to 2 in our, in our greater um, outside summation as our x ranges from 1 to 3. So um, going through all these iterations, we ended up with 6 rectangular prisms and we got the height for each of those and we multiplied that that summation of the height times our, our um, delta y and our delta x to get that total volume all right so now we got this in summation notation now, so now comes the fun part is translating this into an infinite Riemann sum and then translating that into the integral that outside summation went up to three and we're going to change that to an m instead of three and we're going to change that inside um, number of j ind indices from 2 to n. And then we can take the limit as that m and that n approach infinity. So what, essentially what we're doing is we're adding up an infinite number of heights here. And we're going to multiply the summation of all those heights by infinitesimally thin delta y and delta x. And now that we have these infinite sums, you can see we can basically use the definition of our integral to translate these infinite sums into integrals. And in order to do that, one little trick that we'll do is we'll take that delta y and we'll pull that inside that, that parentheses so that um, we can translate that inside infinite sum into an integral with respect to y. So doing that, um, we get this integral. And you see the limits are between c and d, where c and d would be our lower and upper y limits. And now we have this infinite sum 
of this integral on the inside. And that's not um, crazy because that inside integral is just going to end up being a function. So now we can just change that outside infinite sum into an integral as well. And that becomes the integral from a to b, which were our x limits with respect to x. So here we finally have our double integral. And this is basically the general form of one, but if we wanted to go ahead and plug in those values that we had for our particular case, we recall that our C and D Y limits were zero and two, and our A and B X limits were zero and three, and our function with respect to X and Y was 24 minus X squared minus three Y squared. So this would be our final integral setup. And we'll go ahead and evaluate this by hand, um, look at it again in Calcbot 3D and evaluate it by MATLAB in the next video. So stay tuned as we um, go ahead and wrap this up in a nice little bow.